It's podcast time. You're great. Welcome, welcome, everybody, back to another episode of the Handsome Home Buyer Digital Podcast. My name is Charles, aka the Handsome Home Buyer, aka Captain Permit, aka El Julio Maravilloso. All right, I'm good. I'm centered. I look good. I feel good. You know what else looks and feels good and crushes the permit world? That's right. Your friend, the man, the myth, the legend, Captain Permit. 516 513 83. If you need plans, you need permits, if you need anything permit related from tip to tip, Montauk to Elmont, we got you. Legalizations, interior alterations, new construction, commercial, you name it, we do it. We got the best, most personable, most educational team in the business. Give us a call anytime with questions. Obviously, check out Lotus Quotes, L O T U S Q U O T E S, is the number one free listing tool of every real estate agent out there, or at least should be. People, let's think about this for a second. We've all lived this. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, more frustrating and annoying when you have listed a house, dealt with the nonsense, your sellers are telling you that the thing is worth 400000 you know it's worth three twenty-five. you finally get them three thirty-five. dollars jump through all these hoops you've been dealing with for six months, you get it to the closing table, you're about there, and then the phone rings, and the um, attorney says to you, yo, there's no CO for the deck. Pandemonium, your seller's buying a house in North Carolina. Everyone's freaking out, yelling at you, cursing at you. But if you went to Lotus Quotes, when you first took the listing, you would get a free CO search from Captain Permit. You would get a free tax grievance analysis from Heller Consultants. And you would have a free insurance quote, which may include flood if you're by the water, from Allstate. You wouldn't have these problems because you would know. You would either negotiate the deck into the deal give it to them for free, give them a credit, or you would hire hopefully the captain permit to take care of it for you. And then you'd be getting paid without aggravation. So hit up Lotus Quotes, L-O-T-U-S-Q-U-O-T-E-S. -E anytime you list a property, obviously, if you didn't already know, you will know now. I'm Charles, the handsome home buyer. If you have a house that smells like cat piss, it's dated from the 1960s, has six inches of mold on the wall, human waste floating past the basement steps, land, commercial property, self-storage, assisted living, trailer parks, the list goes on and on. If God created it and it can't be moved and he's not making any more of it, I'm quick, I'm easy, I'm a good time, I want to buy it. 516-777, sold. All right, we have a straight gangster guest today. He is real estate royalty. He is a freaking legend. I met him. I heard about him about three and a half years ago. He is crushing it, has been crushing it for two decades on the cusp. He is young looking, although I just found that he's 42 years old, but he looks young as hell. He probably hasn't aged a bit in the last 20 years, but what he has done and what he is doing in the real estate broker space is unbelievable. Let me get my list here of uh, distinguished. Okay. He's, an, he's essentially a broker for EXP. Forget about the technicalities. He represents and cultivates, nurtures, and supports over 400 agents. Let's think about that for a second. This guy is out there, 4 o'clock in the morning, getting jacked with his agents in the gym, cultivating, nursing them, making sure they're out there being the best agents they can be to support their families and realize their own goals. He's been with EXP for 14 months. Before that, he was with Exit Realty for 14 years, and he was the number one brokerage in not Long Island, not in Nassau, not in Suffolk, not in Queens, not in Brooklyn, but all of New York. 2016, 2018, highest grossing office in exit in the entire country. That's right. The entire country. The interesting part is, you will learn, that I just learned, is that he's actually a very introverted guy. I, I, I don't know how that's possible, but we're going to hash it out right here on the Handsome Home Buyer Podcast with our guest, Vincent Koo. Charles, I'm going to yeah. take you around to do my introductions. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to be your hype man. If you're I love it. next, ah, uh, see... Does, does EXP have a convention like Exit had the convention? We do. We do. We've got a lot of trips planned. So you need to fly me out there. And before you come on stage for, for winning whatever insane award you're going to win this year, I need to come out there and rile the crowd up and give yeah. you a, a proper introduction. I so I, I want to kind of – I always like to take it back because for me, 
my thing with successful people is this. It's really easy to look at you and say, yo, Vincent Ku is the man. He has 400 agents. He was top in exit. But like once upon a time, Vincent Ku was not Vincent Ku, right? You probably look the same. You probably had that same great head of hair that you have right now. But, you know, there was a time where Vincent Ku didn't know shit about real estate and probably didn't even know what he wanted to do with his life. So where do you, you know, where do you come from? What's your childhood journey like? And then ultimately, how did you find real estate? And then we'll get into how you took over the world. Yeah. So, so I'm second generation. Mom and dad had a real estate brokerage, uh, oh. one that I never wanted to be a part of. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not because of them, just because I, I don't know. I wanted to blaze my own path. Um, yeah, so sure. com coming out of college, I went to, to wealth management, uh, didn't have anything to do with the family business. In fact, was going to shut their office down and, and open up a, a wealth management company, you know, in their space. And they were okay with all that stuff. They're supportive of everything that I wanted to do. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, dad fell ill, uh, you know, he had uh, developed a brain cancer, unfortunately. And uh, in the year that he suffered with the, the, the brain cancer, that's when I got my license and uh, said, okay, I have to continue their legacy and help mom out and make sure that uh, everything wow. continues. Yeah. So How that was 20 years ago. Is he still with us or? No, he no. He, so he passed after after that year of uh, dealing with the cancer. And wow. that was kind of, you know, that was my my grow up. You know, that's that's when I turned into an adult, uh, maybe too much so of an adult. You know, I started taking things a little too seriously and, and um, you know, push, push, push. Everything was nonstop um, just because I had to, you know, step up for the family and, and for myself. So, so a couple of things you're, um, you said you were first generation. What's your background? I'm Chinese. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you speak, do you, uh, you speak it Mandarin? What do you speak? Oh man, I, I, I speak Mandarin. They tried to teach me Mandarin, went to years of school, such a tough language. And yeah. I, I'll probably be making, you know, five times as much money if I, if I spoke it more fluently. Yeah, man. It's, uh, actually, um, you probably all would, right? I mean, it's, 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 they say it's like the language of the future. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I've, now I have three kids and trying to get them to, to learn that language without being fully immersed. It, very it, hard. I'm sure. Very hard, if not impossible, you know? They want them to do like Arabic, that, and Spanish. Like if they can do those, those, those four three. things in English, you can speak it. to 80% of the world, right? That's it. That's it. You would just take over the world. So I always like to focus on, uh, traumatic events that happen in people's lives, which you just brought up, because I feel like through traumatic events, there's always like insane growth and super magical things that happen through that pain period. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want to, if you care to delve in a little bit more about, you know, what it was like, like what you were like prior to your father uh, getting ill, and then, you know, what happened after and kind of the process of that. Yeah. I mean, um, prior to, my father getting ill, I was, you know, living in the city, um, you know, had had a nice apartment on the 16th floor and, uh, uh, you know, I didn't really have too many cares, just having fun, uh, you know, doing well. And, you know, I just didn't think of the responsibility that, you know, I, I really didn't have any other than just covering my own expenses, right? Didn't think of future or anything like that. Uh, I remember one of the things I, one of the last pieces of advice that my father gave me was, um, you know, I, I went and I was, uh, I, I was with my uh, girlfriend at the time and I said, you know, dad, when, when do you know that it's when you're ready to uh, get married, right? What, is that your wife today or no? My wife today, yeah. My, my wife today. So, you know, I, I met her in high school and, uh, wow. I, you know, been, been with her for a bit, a bit of time. And so I went to my dad and I was like, hey, uh, you know, how do, how do you know when you're ready? And, and he said to me, um, if, if you wait till you're ready, you know, that you'll, you'll never get anything done. Right. So I, I kind of took that with me and was like, sometimes you just have to count on being 70% ready. And the other 30% has to be faith. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and that's it. And are you still? Are you wait? Are you are you still married? Yes, I'm still married. All right. So you know what? Then 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 we'll rock with it. We'll rock yep. with it. Married I'm three kids gonna, now. Gone either way. I know. I know. Yeah. So I mean that that was a a big thing for me, and uh, 
yeah, afterwards I was, I, I don't know. I just feel like I took things so seriously after, after he passed and in terms of work, it was just like nonstop seven days a week and, and, uh, you know, hundred hours a week, just, just trying to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Well, he, pro I mean, you obviously had a sense of responsibility. He was probably, was he a very hard worker? Did he, I'm sure he worked oh, a yeah. lot. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it was almost like, um, you know, my, my parents were the providers, you yeah. know what I mean? Not, not really the nurturers. They, they gave me to the, to, to my aunts to take care of me, yeah, you know, and they were the ones providing for everybody. Right. So it wasn't that they were just providing for my family. They were providing for kind of many families. It's always interesting to, to see the, the hard wiring because, um, I mean, thankfully my, you know, my father is still here. He works with me today, which is very cool, but I was similar to you in the sense that, you know, we were, we came from very hardworking families, but since we, you know, had a certain level of, of privilege because they took care of us, not saying that we were spoiled, but you know, we didn't want to grow up. We're having a good time. I'm doing my thing. You're living in the city, doing your thing. But ultimately when something happens, you, you revert to that hardwiring of what you grew up with, which is witnessing hard work, you know, work ethic, stress for the family, being a provider. And that's ultimately the person you became, which is interesting. Yeah, and uh, and you know I'm I'm hoping that the kids see that part in me too, and uh, you know when when it's when it's their time they they're able to step up and and just go into that hard wiring and work as hard. Yeah, I'm 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 sure they I'm sure they will. It's you know it's like my mother always says you said you are like she used to say this in in regards to you know when you're dating somebody look at their family because you you are what you live like we ultimately all in some way shape or form become a modified version of our parents yeah like it or not yeah which is which which is good so your parents are in the real estate space you you know your father passes or he he becomes ill and you dive right into that and you take over the responsibility of of earning for the family and yeah. this this was a private real estate. You, you were an yeah, associate. Yeah. We were an independent company. And, um, you know, we were, we were doing well for ourselves. And I, I, I come in and just kind of shake things up a little bit. Where yeah. was the brokerage? Were you in the boroughs or out here? We were, you know, believe it or not, we started the brokerage in Manhattan. Um, okay. And they stayed there for four years and then they moved it into Queens. And it's been there ever since. So right now it's, you know, it, 30 some odd years it's been uh, it's been around and uh, yeah I mean we were independent you know doing our own thing and, and I came in and I said you know what I think a franchise is the way to go okay franchise is the way to go you want the big branding you want the you want the name you want the umbrella and all that stuff and so man my mom is so cool she'll she, you know she, she's like oh you think so go for it right it's it's awesome that she gave you that rope to make right. you know mistakes or whatever you know what I'm saying that's a big deal, huge, huge. I mean, and, and she she's like, hey, you know, I, I got your back. You know, we're gonna do this together, and you know, obviously, I had to convince her a little bit, twist her arm a little bit, but um, you know, she she said, let's go for it, you know, and and we uh, went out there, and you know, I picked a good franchise and joined it and stayed with them for 14 years. That was exit. That was exit, yeah. So I want to talk about, so being a broker is, not all brokers are created equal. And I will say that in my own personal opinion, 99.9% .9 of brokers aren't doing the right job. Um, I put you in the 1% of, of brokers that are really doing the right job. And obviously, you know, your, your numbers justify that. Being a broker is, it's a, it's a very hard thing to do. It's, um, you know, a lot of agents that are successful, they, you know, they stay agents because it's a totally different skill set. You can't, a lot of agents think, you know what, I'll just become a broker and I'll make this money and I'll just sell my houses. When you become a broker, I would say that you're no longer in the business of selling real estate. You're in the business of cultivating and educating and nurturing agents. And it is not an easy thing to do, especially at your scale. So, I'm curious to know how you do that, how you attack that, and then how ultimately you built a crazy machine. Right. Um, let, I mean, when we went from independent to the franchise, we moved with 18 agents. 
18 agents, one location, and it was just going out there and building the company one agent at a time. Um, and we we put we ended up putting about a 150 agents under one roof before we decided it's time to expand. And in wow. that expansion, it was kind of like it was kind of like okay, you build out one market center, it's time to go out there and find another market to to build into. And that secondary market for us was going to be Manhattan. Okay. Same thing, started from scratch, zero agents, and built that up to about 125 agents. So, but, I mean, and again, you can obviously talk about as, as much or little as you like, but when you say that, it sounds like a very effortless and easy thing to do. Like, yeah, oh, no. you know, we, just, we had fine. 18 agents, we had 200, we right. destroyed Queens, we ran Queens, so we'll go to Manhattan, or we'll go here, or we'll go there. I mean... The brokerage industry, in my opinion, right now, and probably has been for a while, is very similar to the fitness industry. And what I mean by that is it's like agents are very – brokers just want to have as many people working for them as possible, stereotypically. There's not a lot of nurturing and training. They sure as hell aren't working out with their people at 4.30 in the morning like you are. And when agents don't reach a certain level of success, they jump to something else and blame the broker. But you obviously don't have that, but like you have significant retention. Like that's awesome. Like no, nobody does I that. Say, I wouldn't say I don't have that problem. I'd say everybody does. Um, yes, but you, you must have a certain level of retention that other people don't because you, you continue to grow over a two decade period. Don't be modest. Um, yeah, I don't know what to attribute that to. Right? <laughs> Just putting my head down and just working and just having the right people behind us because it's not, yeah, I don't, I don't keep it all together. They, they all keep themselves together. You know, it's, it's a, a collective group that we have. And I guess that's the way you have to see it. No, I, that, and that makes sense. But you're obviously, people stay with people that are giving them value, right? And they feel, have their back. And if they have a question, so there, I mean, there's got to be certain things about the way you operate that, and, and maybe you just do it inherently and you don't even realize it's just like second nature to you about the way you are with people. But I mean, my hat's off to you, sir. Obviously to do what you've done, you, you know, that's, that's, that's not easy. Yeah. Thanks, man. So, um, I want to kind of talk about, what do I want to talk about, I want to talk about a, the fact that you told me that you are a very introverted person, which I find very hard to believe how you, how you build and nurture 400 agents and are an introverted person who doesn't really love being on camera or anything. Oh yeah, this is all new for me. Um, and believe it or not, it only happened maybe a, a few months ago, I wanna say. Uh, we, we had uh, an event planned. It was a live event, and even saying yes to that was a, a little bit of a challenge, but I, I said, yes, let's do it. It was a three-day event you know, all over New York. I was bringing some people in. We were gonna go from borough to borough, um, training agents on, 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 I don't even know what, what the, the topic was at the time. And then uh, COVID hit and the shutdown happened. And we had to, we had a bunch of people registered already. We had just, we had to turn them all away. And we decided overnight that we were going to move that event virtual. And instead of kind of pulling back, we were going to expand on it. Nice. And so what we did was we, you know, added speakers and, you know, we ended up pulling in 16 speakers. We had an eight hour long event and we brought in thousands of viewers and it was just incredible. So from that, I said, you know what? I can't do this by myself. So I got a coach, you know, I got somebody that, that, you know, kicks my ass a little bit and says, Hey, Vincent, you got to do this. This is how you set it up. Here's, here's what you do. And then you got to keep a certain uh, consistency going forward. And that's what I did. That's it. It's helped me. doesn't make, I guess it makes it a little easier cause I've done it a few times now, mm -hmm. um, but it's still, it's still a little bit of a challenge. No, that's cool. I mean, you know, a lot of lessons to be learned there from people, a for a lot of people would look at you and say, you know, for as success, successful as he is, you know, why would he need a coach? Like people said to me, like, yo, if you're really doing all these houses, why'd you go back to NYU to get your master's degree? Maybe you're not really doing what you say you're doing. Because the the process of education and growing is is something that never stops. Nonstop. 
it's it's forever and you're you know you're always learning and changing and growing and as we get older the younger generation to kind of segue into my next topic is you know what you're feeling is on you know social media content creation how you know brokers can 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 utilize that to support their agents and have their agents grow plus you grow your own personal brand as as a as a broker I think that is probably one of the most important things right now and one of the biggest mistakes that I've made over the last you know, uh, decade and a half or so, or, or two decades, or my entire time at, in real estate, you know, was I didn't brand myself enough. But, all right, so <laughs> I know you say that, but at the same time, you still recruited 300 plus agents when you were at Exit. So. I'm trying to understand how somebody who says that they're introverted and not like a personal brander, but yet people are, are attracted to you. But that was never, it was never about me and it was never about, um, you know, branding, I guess, is when people seek you out and kind of go after you. Right. Okay. Um, And, and know who you are and all that stuff. I don't think I had that. Um, you know, I, I think I'm just, starting that and starting to build that. Uh, I think that a lot of agents kind of hide behind their, their company brand. Okay. And it kind of makes sense in the beginning, but it could actually hurt you. And I'm seeing now that agents are finally realizing that and they're building their own personal brand. Yeah, no, that, that, um, that, that makes sense. You know, if you look at if you look at these companies, like you look at, um, and it happens in the fitness world a lot, which is interesting. If you look at Peloton, or if you look at like Rumble Boxing, the business model seems to be that they want each instructor to kind of develop their own personal brand to be their own little mini kind of rock star to enhance their own following. Right. Um, and and I guess that that translates perfectly to the real estate world with you know real estate agents and mortgage brokers and things like that. Uh, everybody really has to build their own their own personal brand. Yeah, I, I agree. So you know, you're out there. Your customers are, you know, the, the the brand, the name. It might help you a little bit, but it, it's you personally that the, the consumers are going to be looking at, looking for. So how are you? How are you kind of helping your agents and the people that you're close to in the industry adapt to that? Obviously, you know, you're you're jumping into it. <laughs> that's how a lot of people are having a hard time getting going with that. And they're still looking at the old way of doing things, which is, you know, newspapers and bus stops and stuff, stop signs and things like that. Whereas this is really the, the now and the future. And I really noticed it accelerate heavily through COVID. Yep. People really became a lot more comfortable with living online. So if you don't have that online presence, I would say in the next three to five years, like you're, you're in a really big trouble. Agreed. So I, I help them through it by, you know, jumping in myself first and trying to, to, you know, lead by example a little bit. Right. And, um, you know, getting them involved. A, a lot of what I'm putting out there is, is with, with my people, with my group. Yeah. No, that makes sense. How did the 4:30 AM workout start? Oh man. It's, it's, uh, just one, one agent, one agent just comes and says, Hey, Vincent, what do you, you want to work out with us tomorrow? You want to work out with me tomorrow? And you know, that, that kind of snowballed into an accountability thing, right? Because who needs to work out at four 30 in the morning? It, it, Bro, I, I want to be that guy. Yeah. Like Brian Carp, I always say this, Brian Carp sends me pictures of his alarm clock at like three in the morning. He's like doing a heavy bench and I really want to be that guy, but my body is like, no. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's all about the team. It's all about the accountability. It's all about doing what other people are not doing. Um, and you, you know, that's what it is. And it's been a consistent group for a long period of time up until they start, you know, they, they close down all the gyms around here. Um, but it, it just takes one person, right? That you need to be accountable to that will allow you to s- step up. It's kind of like motivation and uh, uh, motivation versus discipline, right? It's like motivation you need to get you to do things, but motivation kind of comes and goes. Some days you feel motivated to do things, some days you don't. 
And on the days you don't, that's when you need discipline, right? Because that discipline is the consistency that's going to drive you through and, and, you know, push you past the lows. Very well said. That's awesome. I was just, I always do, uh, I think you've seen them. I do, um, I call them a nugget, but every time I launch a podcast, the day before I'll do like an intro clip. Yeah. That's a highlight for the podcast guest. And as you were saying it, I'm like, that's it. That's it. He's dropping knowledge. I'm not going to drop, jump in. This is going to be it. This is a gem. So anybody who heard that internalize that, listen to it again, because it's, it's a very, very valuable piece of, uh, of advice. So, um, I want to talk about EXP, what you're doing, because EXP is super interesting, revolutionary concept, and you guys continue to uh, up the bar in what you're doing and, and being creative. You and I were working together on that new investor platform, which you're you know welcome to share. I want everybody to know about it, which is very cool. And obviously, if anyone's interested in it in the space, they should reach out to you. Um, but explain kind of the difference for the people out there that don't understand what the difference between EXP and a traditional brokerage is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, EXP is one brokerage that covers the entire world. Okay. One brokerage that covers the entire world, completely different than the franchise model where you have all of these tiers with the international company, the friend, you know, the, the regional owners, the franchisees, and then the agent, right? Basically, we've got the agents as the owner of the company and the international company just there to really support them. So all 50 states, um, the, the company is about 10 years old. When I came in, I was, uh, you know, we had 20,000 agents. Right now, we've got about 34,000 agents, you know, and it's, it's one thing to have that agent count growth. That, that sounds good, but what's really nice is that the production is there as well. So Real Trends 2020 report rated us the number one independent real estate company in the USA, above Element, above um, Compass, in terms of number of transactions closed, right? And I truly believe that that's because we're compensating our top producers as owners. And when we do that, they decide to open up their playbook and kind of give back to the company, right? So it's kind of natural. Like everybody kind of just motivates everybody else. Everybody uh, pushes everybody else and we had, we rise to the top. And that same Real Trends report, they rated us compared to all real estate companies. So it kind of an inclusive report, not just the independents. And EXP showed up as number three on that report, okay? In terms of number of transactions close. I think that's impressive. I mean, that's insanely impressive. And you guys are, are growing at such a, a, a rapid pace. Do you want to tell people, because I've heard a little bit about it, but I don't know the intricate details of it, of just the the gentleman that started EXP came from a, was in the brokerage industry for a long time, came from a different um, brokerage and kind of invented this this concept. Do you want to talk a little bit about how it, this came about? Yeah. So Glenn, Glenn Sanford um, was the founder of EXP Realty. And it, it, I think it, it's more than he just came from the real estate industry from another brand or something like that, because it takes outside the box thinking to create what he created. Right. So, you know, he, he came from the, the startup world. He, he also uh, spent some time, um, you know, understanding the stock market and what he was able to do is kind of merge all of those things together. He created a platform that, um, it, essentially, it's the like first cloud-based real estate brokerage, the first cloud-based global real estate brokerage, right? And it's publicly traded. It's agent-owned. It's one thing to own the company. First of all, there's no real, you know, there's no companies out there where they're giving the ownership into the hands of the real estate agents. But it's another thing that they share their revenues back to the agents. So this company actually gives 50% of its revenues back to its real estate ag agents who own the company. Yeah, I mean, think about that for a second because real estate agents, they are they basically run their own businesses. So a lot of them don't have health insurance. A lot of them, more importantly, don't have a retirement strategy. And what EXP very cleverly has done is, is given them that. Both. 
yeah. So, so you've got that retirement. Um, you've got the additional stream of income with uh, the revenue share. So we get 12 additional paychecks every, every year. I actually jumped onto their health insurance plan, you know, that back in November and I'm saving 1500 a month uh, for my family. And, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that. I thought that was really cool. Um, and I get ownership. So, uh, you know, in, in my short period of time, they've given me um, tons of stock. That is, you know, when, when I first joined, it was $9 a share. Right now, I think I didn't check today, but it should be trading somewhere in the 40 range. And short Good period of time, too. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. Good for you, man. That's freaking awesome. I, I do and want to talk about this express offers thing because I think that that um, can help people like you and, and what you're doing, but also um, is kind of a game changer out there. Right, because you have these companies like Zillow offers, you have these companies like OfferPad and Open Door, and these are iBuyers, right? And an owner could go out there and click a button and say, "Hey, how much would you pay for my house?" And usually, with all of those platforms, it's just Zillow buying the house, it's just OfferPad buying the house, it's just you know um, Open Door buying the house. What we've done that's different is we've created a platform where you know, investors like yourself can plug in and receive properties that fit your buy box and say, and you could say, you know, yes, I want to make an offer on it or no, I'll pass on it. Right. So I could now bring to a seller multiple cash offers on their properties from fix and flip investors, buy and hold investors and land investors. Okay. It's the only one of its kind in the nation. We're open in 32 states right now and expanding to the rest of the states. And we probably have about 80 institutional buyers plugged in, including yourself. You're one of the first in New York, so congratulations, right? You're, you're, gonna, have, uh, you're gonna have EXP agents presenting you properties right through this platform. You're gonna be able to say yes or no to any of them. And I think that's what all, all cash investors want. They want a steady stream of properties being put in front of them for them to consider. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 great on a number of different levels. Explain to the investors out there what the criteria is, how the how it functions a little bit, so they they get kind of a, an idea okay. about how that works. So, so we're actually looking for ex, you know uh, very in, experienced investors. So you know our criteria is fifty homes purchased cash within the last twelve months. We just dropped that to 25 homes just because we're rolling out this platform fairly new and we want to add a good number of um, iBuyers onto the platform, but we'll bump that up to 50 uh, soon. So we need you to buy 50 homes cash in the last 12 months or 25 right now. We need you to be able to give proof of funds every two months all right, to show your ability to buy these homes cash. And we also don't want you to be a competing uh, brokerage. So it's one thing, you know, to have your broker's license, but it's another thing to uh, list and sell properties other than the own properties that you have. So fairly simple, not not too much in terms of you know criteria, and it doesn't cost you anything to see the property. Doesn't cost you anything to make an offer on the property or to consider the property, right? So it, to me, it's a win-win for for everybody. Yeah, it's a very cool, unique platform. It also gives agents. The opportunity, from what I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you know, every agent has this thing where they, um, you know, they, they approach for sale by owners, for example, and the people don't want to list for whatever reason. You know, this gives the agent, this, this gives the seller the opportunity to only pay half the commission if the agent can bring a buyer. And it gives the agent the ability to tap into uh, a large and growing network of qualified people who, who want that product, whatever it is. Yeah, it's 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 their foot in the door, right? It's our ability because of those those three big companies that I mentioned. I don't even think they're in in our marketplace yet, right? We don't have Zillow offers here. We don't have no, Zillow, right? Not that I'm aware of. I don't even understand how they would go about doing something like that, really. I mean, real estate is one of those things, like I made a video this past week. You've heard of the 70% rule. You've heard of that? Mm -hmm. the, like how you can, I buy houses sight unseen all the time. Like I buy stuff that I never saw until the people get out and then I go and see it. But I, I live in the market. 
yeah. how they can use an algorithm to purchase houses on a national scale just blows my mind. I just, I don't know how they do it. I think ultimately they're going to take a bath. That's why uh, this platform is so great is because they plug into the agent's knowledge of the marketplace, right? So it is the agents that are going to be presenting you these properties, yeah. right? It's the agents that are, are going to say, okay, here's the value. Here's the 70% rule. Here's how it fits into exactly what you're looking for. You know, and, and the, the software kind of filters everything so that you're only seeing what you want. Yeah, and and EXP is doesn't have that risk of physically buying properties themselves, which you know they're not in the they're not in that business. They're in the business of, of providing a, a service, which is what they do. So it's it's brilliant, man. What they're doing is brilliant, and um, I'm really excited to be a part of it, and I'm excited to see what what happens uh, in the upcoming months with it. It's very very cool. Um, where do you see the industry going? Like you're, you know, I'm 40, you're 42. So I'm, do you think you're young? Do you feel young? I feel young. But I feel like I'm aging backwards a little bit. I don't know if it's because I'm paying a little bit more attention to my health now. You know, I want to live longer. I don't know what it is. I've been yeah. saying the same thing. As a matter of fact, I think I'm sprouting some more hair. Yeah, I see that. I see right? that. You notice <laughs> the part right there? Um, so I feel like, yeah, I'm going backwards and, and everything's going to start to, uh, to reverse. So, I mean, you're a very young guy, you've done a, a tremendous amount in the industry. You know, what does the next 40 years look like for you? Oh man, I, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a collaborative environment. It's going to be less, you know, kind of agent versus agent. It's, there's going to be more alignment. There's. I think it's very interesting what's going to happen to the franchise model because I think the franchise model, um, you know, it, it speaks to collaboration, but it doesn't really practice collaboration, right? You have these companies that are independently or offices that are independently owned and operated and they're not really working together. And I think that's, that's you know, I, I think that's going to be a challenge moving forward. You need to work together now. Without a doubt. Um, and I think that's more of like, you know, generational mindset. You know, I think a lot of people like people all the time, like what we just talked about, about the iBuyer platform, nine out of 10 people that are watching this or will watch this or listen to this in the future are like, Charles, why the hell would you ever talk about something like that if you were one of the first people who's in, involved in the platform? And it's like, that's not how this works, man. Like the old way of thinking that I have to hoard everything that's mine and keep a low profile doesn't work. It's counterproductive. The more we work together in a positive way and lift each other up, the more opportunity we will give to each other. It's just, I, I, I live it every day. I agree a hundred percent. And I see the stuff that you're putting out there. It's all value, right? You're, you're teaching other investors how to become better investors yeah and and and, it, and it's you you would think it's counterintuitive but man i could see your business expanding tremendously because of it exactly and another very important point that i try to drill down the people is and and you've done a very good job of this because you've been evolving and jumping and seeing opportunity and going with it is nothing lasts forever today so if you feel like you are going to have a certain model of doing business and you're going to spend the next 40 years of your career doing it exactly the same way, it is not going to happen. It's not. You know, everything has like a five-year life expectancy until it starts to tank. And if you're not looking for the next avenue or of opportunity, you know, like an EXP or something like that, you are going to find yourself in, in a bad position. Yep. Set yourself up with multiple streams. Right. And then you're in the business of real estate. So you better go out there and own, you know, you're talking ownership to your, your customers all day and uh, all day and night. Right. So you better go out there and practice what you preach and own the business that you're working in. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Um, listen, you are a young legend in the business. I appreciate your time. I, I freaking, it was great to catch up with you. Like I, I know you, but a lot of these podcasts are selfish in the sense that I get to kind of delve in and peel away the layers of, of interesting for people that, that I, um, that I've met. So thank you for that. Obviously, listen, if you are a broker and you want to unload, you know, certain things that 
are taking up your time that exp can do better for you and come in under the exp umbrella i encourage everybody to reach out to you if you're an agent who isn't happy where they are and trust me i talk to agents all day every day 99 percent of them are not happy where they are how do people get in touch with you um reach out to you what's your your best means of, of contact yeah i mean um i'm, I'm on social media so find me on uh, facebook instagram i think it's Vincent Koo underscore NYC. You could get me there, right? You, sure? you can find me through you. Uh, <laughs> you this way. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll put the uh, we'll put the link in this podcast at the end so people can find you. But yeah, listen, you're you're a gentleman. I appreciate your time, everything you've shared, what you've done for the industry, and what you continue to do for the industry, um, and for introducing me to the platform. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, obviously, if you have a permit problem. You got to call the captain, 516-513-8838. And if you have a house that smells like cat peas dated from the 1960s, land, commercial property, anything real estate related, you know, Vincent knows. I want everybody to know I want to buy it. 516-777-SOLD. That is a wrap. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vincent. I'll be in touch. Have a great yeah. one.